open the floor to questions. Could I request the panelists to take their seats there or on the stage forward? I will introduce each of the panelists uh, as the time approaches for them to speak, please. Um, a call for um, temporary special measures or affirmative action. Not just because we want to get reserved seats, but because of the, the challenge is really thinking about the legitimacy of the, 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 the limitations. So limitations are in themselves, you know, just, uh, you know, in a blanket manner is not something that we should be sort of, you know... Grounded on the fact that we all have the right to assemble and meet as long as we are not inconveniencing other people. Uh, the idea, Ashwin, that the arrest of five opposition people authority, you know, and uh, having worked in the media all these years uh, uh, in the Western Division from Singapore to... The, the point that I like to make is I like to stick to the topic, um, which is the Ephesian Bill of Rights and uh, Divisible. Um, essentially, what we are saying is that our argument is that rights essentially are indivisible. And the reality is that um, most of the discussions around rights uh, in Fiji have centrally been focused on civil and political rights to look at the history of our constitutional development in Fiji. And I think the point that has been fundamentally missed is that there has been a lack of focus on socio-economic rights. If you look at the theory of rights per se, there have of course been discussions around, you know, a lot of people have written about whether rights are divisible at all or whether they are indivisible. Some of it has focused purely on civil and political rights. Others have also talked about the tension between prioritization. Should, for example, civil and political rights come first, and then second should be socio-economic rights. And I think that's what uh, some of the Asian countries have argued, that you actually must have socio-economic rights first, then you can seal political rights. Others, of course, have argued is that countries like America, probably the USA, would be a good example of that, where they believe civil political rights should be given priority as opposed to socio-economic rights, fundamentally based on the premise of capitalism and that you know, one only does as well as how they work hard, etc. So you have a very... Uh, I suppose, arguably, in some of the studies have shown, an unequal society, because of socio-economic disparities that exist within society, notwithstanding the fact that you actually have social, uh, you actually have civil and political rights. So I think there are some of the tensions that we need to be able to discuss, and some of the issues that uh, need to be highlighted. I think the the uh, Nolan's points, I think, are very, very key and fundamental to the development of not just an elucidation of the rights that have been set out in the Constitution, but the actual development of the jurisprudence. I mean, Michelle already talked about what is the, uh, you know, I'm getting frustrated about what is the actual definition. If you look at most of the countries in the world, including Australia, New Zealand, the USA, and other countries, in fact, this very, this very actual topic or very uh, issue is brought before the courts. Because you may have at times, and there would be a tension, for example, how an administrative arm of the state, whether it's a permanent secretary, whether it's a director for environment, whether it's a police officer, how they actually interpret the law and how that is actually taken forward in terms of its implementation or any of the, for example, arrests that may take place, any decisions, administrative decisions that may be made. Now that interpretation of that is then in deliberated through the courts. And I think that was Ashwin's point in respect of, you know, you have a court system that actually make those decisions, that actually provide that um, answer to you in terms of what is the actual interpretation of that particular provision. The indivisibility of rights, I think, is, is, uh, is critical. And I'm coming from the perspective of indivisibility of rights vis-a-vis -vis civil and political rights and social economic rights. If you look at, for example, the political interruptions in Fiji, in particular in 87 and 2000, the justification of the removal of government in those times were essentially predicated on ethnicity. And you were actually able to go out and say to people, look, these people are doing a lot better than you. These people have got more, you know, um, they've got more television sets, they've got more radios, they've got more cars, they've got better houses. But look at you, you're drinking from a well. Look at you, you're going to the toilet in a pit. 
Now these are very social, you know, these are very fundamental issues that need to be addressed in any society. If you do not have socio-economic issues addressed, and I like Patai's point, Fiji is not super. Fiji is definitely not super. And if you look at a lot of the issues that do emanate, Sharon's done a lot of rural work, she knows this. There's a huge disparity between what actually happens in Suva and what happens probably just outside of Suva, or what just happens in one more level. We need to be able to understand that, we need to really contextualize that and give it a practical importance. And that's why Nolan's point is very important. You do have the laws, you have a constitution, you have specific laws, well it's the Environmental Act, etc., Environmental Management Act. It is the actual, actual implementation of it. And at a practical level, how does that enhance somebody's dignity? How does that, at a practical level, give somebody enhanced rights? More importantly, how does that, at a practical level, protect somebody's rights, which would be set out, for example, in the Constitution, or indeed in various other laws? So I think in the, what, what we need to do, and I, would, you know, I don't want to, uh, there were a lot of issues that were raised uh, from the floor, and some of the issues raised by the panel, I mean, I could go and, and respond to them individually. But rather than that, I like to take a very positive approach, and I think uh, it has to be said that whilst the Constitution has been implemented, and it is a Constitution that has been afforded by many countries in the world and many other uh, entities outside Fiji and even within Fiji, we need to move along. We need to be able to say, this is the document we have, let's see how best, if we are truly concerned about individual rights, if we are concerned about enhancing the rights of every single person in this room, let's see how we can, through the uh, legal framework we have, enhance those rights. That's the way to do it. Fiji, unfortunately, does not have a plethora of jurisprudence available as far as human rights are concerned. I mean, how many cases do we have on socioeconomic rights? I mean, I can give you a few cases that were under the 1997 Constitution. When people talk about um, you know, abuse, etc., you had kids that were handcuffed to uh, coconut trees, and there's a very famous case where this kid was actually given some form of compensation because the police did that. There were certain police stations in Fiji that actually bought chilies every week because that was a form of interrogation. That happened 10 years ago, that happened 15 years ago. Now, there may be certain practices that does not happen, there may be certain practices that exist at the moment that needs to be eradicated. So how do we all work together to fix that issue? Nolan's point again, climate change is very, very important. We have three villages that have been removed to a higher ground because these people have water encroaching in their homes. <coughs> now, what about their sustained livelihoods? How are we going to look after them? It has a very critical issue for them. Their actual livelihood. Are we going to sit here in Suva and then decide how are we going to help them? That's the point. That's why the constitution is there. You have the, for example, you say it's very topical at the moment, one of the most litigious societies in the world. And a lot of the cases actually pertain to the constitution. People use constitutional arguments on a frequent basis. Why aren't we using that? Why aren't the lawyers who, for example, talk about this rather than being caught in a time war? Why aren't they using these provisions of the constitution? And section 6 of the Constitution that talks about the Bill of Rights, section 7, talks about the courts can make reference to international law where appropriate. So there is that uh, you know, opportunity to do that. And indeed, there was a case that I did when I was in the DPP's office, and the late uh, Rata Tony Wanraiwiwi was a judge, where there was a case of a prison prisoner who actually did something that the Commission of Prison at that point in time did not like. This was around about 1999 or so. And what he did was, was that he cut back on the number of pieces of cassava he could have for breakfast. Now, that was treated, and rather John actually uh, you know, gave the ruling on that, it was seen as cruel and degrading treatment. Now, there are a lot, there's, but there's a very shortage of cases in those areas. We need to develop that. The only way we can develop that is to actually, if you believe that the law is not right, if you believe there is a definition <coughs> issue, and that the definition perhaps is oppressive to the overall intent of the provision as far as the right is concerned, let's take it to a court of law. We have already said, for example, government has already said that we will be re-looking at the Public Order uh, Act. And we've already given that undertaking. The Prime Minister actually made that undertaking. And that new uh, session of Parliament will be looking at that. So there's obviously various changes that have been made. There has been some progress that has been made as far as the media decree is concerned. Those uh, progresses, those changes have been made and will continue to be made. But 
we need to be able to engage. I mean, everybody talks about engagement. This is engagement. Matai said, this is engagement. But let's not sit there and say, oh, we don't actually have engagement, let's engage. Well, come on. We all have to do something about it. And we have not at any point in time, for example, said, let's not have any engagement. The Deputy Chair of the, the Human Rights and Justice and Law uh, Committee has said, come and make submissions. Let's make the submissions. So please, I, I would urge you to uh, think about, in a very positive framework, uh, for example, this issue raised about, uh, I think somebody over here, Salen, I think, raised the issue about, you know, why are there so many, something to do with the media? Yes, I mean, these are the issues, that, sorry? Yeah, I mean, look, we had the VET decree in 19, uh, 1985, 1987, whatever it was, I'm sorry, 1989, that is still in place. We had the fair trading decree that was put in 1987 or whenever it was, post the events of 87, that everybody was still using. So my point is that you have to look at, not whether it's called a decree, but you have to look at what kind of law is it? How is it affecting the individual rights of a person? How is it affecting the rights of people, all Fijians living in our country? So I think the, what is really important for us to be able to understand, and this is one of the issues that I've always highlighted, we must understand that socio-economic rights are just as important as civil political rights. And it goes to issues things like even environment. Now, for example, what Nolene raised it, because this is very topical, it's, very, it's a very important issue about climate change, the effect on human beings, the effect on livelihood, and we have those spaces, we need to create those spaces, the Constitution may, may not necessarily talk about you know, climate change per se, but it talks about the preservation of the environment. Uh, now, we need to have, be able to have this conversation. And what Ashwin actually said is that you know, we need to specifically address some of these issues. We've got budget consultations. We have consultations with high school kids throughout Fiji in the last budget, uh, prior to the last budget. It's never been done before. And we hope to do more and more of that. But it is a responsibility and it's open. Time Link has never been stopped from coming and making a submission to the uh, budget consultation. Everybody can. Please do so. So I'd like to end on a positive note to say that we have a very comprehensive set of Bill of Rights. For the first time, we actually have a Bill of Rights that fundamentally addresses socioeconomic issues, which is a significant issue in, in Fiji and has not been addressed for decades. And based on that, let's move forward. Let's try and you know, further refine uh, the, the rights uh, uh, <coughs> in Fiji. Thank you very much.